Hello, Filmatics. We have a very special guest today, a uh, guest from the hint. <laughs> we have Ben Fiore. He's an award-winning option and recently produced screenwriter. <laughs> Let's welcome Ben to the show. <laughs> Hi, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I turned that off. I was having so much fun with the music. I hope everyone heard me. We have Ben Fiore. Did I say it right? Ben Fiore is on the show. <laughs> yes, Fiore. Yeah. And Ben, where are you um, recording with me live today from? I am from Valley Stream, New York, which is a suburb of New York City. Oh, great. So it, nice. And you're originally from Coney Island, right? Right. I was born in Coney Island um, about uh, 1967, about eight years old. We, we moved, you know, to the suburbs. So kind of had that, that taste of Coney Island nostalgia when I was growing up. And it was a lot of fun, a lot of great memories with that. Oh, great. And so, uh, so when you were a little boy in Coney Island, did you have a favorite film? Uh, yeah, you know, I was kind of into, you know, uh, I guess kids stuff back then. And, you know, when I was a little kid and in Coney Island, and uh, you, you, when you think of the water and everything, you, think, you remember the incredible Mr. Limpet? It was a, a half cartoon and half live action uh, kids movie with, um, and I believe it was, um, it was Don Knotts. Don Knotts? Right. And he, what, what happens is, and I used to love this as a kid. And he, he winds up, he wants to, to be, be a fish and he falls into the water and it becomes a fish and, it beco and then it becomes animation after that, from live action to animation. So I was kind of fascinated with that as a, as a kid and I remember it and then going to the beach. You know, my mom used to take us to the beach um, in the morning and I was only a few blocks away from it. I used to see the, you know, that the, the, uh, the landmark parachute, uh, you know, the, you, when you see a picture of Coney Island, you see the big parachute. Um, okay. You know, think I'm a landmark now. I used to watch the people come down on there. And then we had Nathan's with the hot dogs and stuff. So it was, it was really a lot of fun, you know, growing up as a kid there. Did you try to find Mr. Limpid in the ocean? <laughs> I know. I, I would look in there and say, yeah, I wonder if this guy is, you know, swimming around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was a lot of fun, you know, as a kid, though, and, and it, it kind of coincided with growing up there, you know, like especially a movie like that with the ocean and stuff, because that played such a big part, you know, we're two blocks away from the beach. Oh, how so, fun. Wow. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of, like I said, a lot of nostalgia there. With kind of, and still sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll go out uh, just to, to look around and walk around a little bit, go to Nathan's, you know, that's the original Nathan's over there. With that, the uh, those hot dogs and they have those crinkly fries and it's just like great. The trip is worth it. You know, uh, <laughs> we're about maybe a drive from it now. The crinkly French so, fries and the hot dogs from Nathan's. That sounds delicious. Crazy, crazy stuff. Really good. So something you have to experience because that's the original one. Yeah, it's still there, still thriving. Oh wow, yeah. wow. So we'll have to check it out, Nathan's. So did you have a lot of brothers and sisters? Did you have a big Italian family, or what was your family like? You know, you know not, not a big family, brother and sister, and, 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 you know, nothing too big, you know, not a real big family, but extended or anything, but, you know. Just, Who got to pick the one. movie? Who got to pick the movies you saw? Uh, me. <laughs> 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 you know, especially as a kid, you know, you're into the, the kid kind of films, and then, of course, as you grow older, you know, you, I, I tend to get into more of the dramas and thrillers, you know. Horror films, I'm a big horror movie, but the old fashioned, you know, Lon Chaney, Bella Lugosi stuff. Oh, nice. On Saturday night, instead of roaming the streets on Saturday nights, I was home with my mom. We were both film buffs and we watched Chula Theater. I don't know if you recall that. We had Channel 11 over here at WPIX in New York. Every Saturday night, they'd have Chula Theater. Wait, Chiller? So show, Chil what is it? Chiller. It's called Chula Theater. Chiller. What it was, right. They would show all the old classics, like I said, like Lon Chaney as the Wolfman. Boris Karloff as Frankenstein, Bela Lugosi as Dracula. You had all the classics and all the great ones. I used to love that. Oh. You know, that maybe that could take me into the, into the writing, I think. Oh, my mom liked all the um the comedies, like It's a Mad, Mad World. I think I remember seeing It's Incredible Mr. Limpet. I liked a Don Knotts. I liked um, Preston Surges. I liked the Groucho Marx. Anything with screwball comedy, I was like, yes, yes. I'm also a big fan of slapstick comedy. Three Stooges, I'm a very big fan of them. 
Lord and Hardy, Ivan and Costello, you know, those kind of things. But the, the Stooges, I was like, real. Well, that's all I used to watch. It was just like every, I don't have that, you know what I mean? And the slapstick, which just to me, like some people looked at, you know, some people looked at it as kind of like stupid or corny, but to me, it was just so funny because they would put the sound effects in with the slaps and the stuff. So it would enhance the whole, the whole thing. So it was, it was so funny to me that, you know, it, you know, and I was in Capitol at the time when I was a kid and they, they were actually forbidding us to watch that stuff. Can oh. you believe that? What, they, they told us not to watch that or the Adams family because of the, you know, like they just didn't, the negative kind of things they would do, but it was funny, you know. Oh, and we Adams watched family. it anyway. Well, the more they told us that, the more we watched it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I remember like those, we didn't have a lot of channels growing up, but Adam's family couldn't wait to see that. And like, um, uh, we yeah. had all the regular broadcast channels, you know, you didn't have cable back then. So we were very limited. You know, you, you just had um, the major channels and then that was it. Maybe channel 13 was a little bit different. PBS was, you know, but you had regular programming on the regular broadcast channels Had the antenna up on the roof. You know, it's not like today, you know, we had then we then we went through the whole uh, the uh, era with cable, and then now you know it's streaming. Well, I mean, it's so much different today, and you have like hundreds of channels now. But back then, like you just said, we we were very limited. Yeah, that's you know, probably so. why I started writing because I have to write my own fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that, that yeah, you got to make your own content and get yeah. it over. You get it out of it, you know. Yeah. Um, Which so, is a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. So you're this little kid, and you're growing up in Coney, New, um, New York Island, and then like so when you went to college, like uh, uh, it's like you you have a different path to um, entertainment than most people. Do you want to share a little right. bit about? Oh, well, let, let's. Did you have a big director? Like, did you say, "Oh, I wish I could be a director"? Was there a favorite um, Criterion film that you loved that maybe inspired you to go make films or write? Well, out of the directors, there there are a few. Um, I always loved Martin Scorsese's work. I I love uh, Steven Spielberg. They, you know, though they they kind of you know uh, Oliver Stone is another one. I I you know I I liked all of their stuff and have a lot of respect for them. That they're really innovative directors, you know, and they really put put forth some great you know classic stuff. So I kind of you know. I just loved uh, film. I was just very fascinated by the cinema, even as a young boy, you know, and that, that kind of, you know, when I would go to the movies back then, you know, in my day, uh, you saw two feature films for, for, for a fraction of the price of a theater ticket today. And that's even by those standards, it's even still, you got two feature films and you would get maybe a cartoon or a short film before, like the Pink Panther or something would be laughing, you know, and then that would get you all warmed up for the movies. And, and these the films, you know, they would, uh, especially if it was a good film, would shape me not only in a creative sense, but sometimes in a social sense. If it was a good movie and it touched on, you know, something that you know was important at that period, you know, particular time. So to me, the movie it was an escape. It was a whole afternoon spent at the movies. Nowadays, you go in, you spend, you know, five times that, and you get a half hour of trailers. And then maybe the movie, the tra- the trailer that you saw for that particular movie might be better than the movie. So you know, it's all so commercial now. But uh, but now with um, you know, with the streaming uh, stuff, you know, you have a lot of times HBO Max will show will simultaneously show something that's being also shown in the theater. So you you have that you know uh, at your fingertips now. So it makes it a bit different, makes it better. But back then it was a whole experience, and like I said, I would get away for a whole afternoon at the movies with two feature films, you know, it was an escape for me. You know, so I always loved, I was always fascinated. To me, there was a certain magic in, in movies and making movies, every aspect of it, whether it was the, the writers, the directors, the actors, I, I always felt that it was, uh, it was a kind of a magic that I wanted to be a part of someday. But, you know, I came from a working class family. We didn't have the money for, for me to go to film school or anything like that. So I found myself putting it on the back burner after a while. And then after that, you know, then the next thing I know, I'm standing in a, in a hot July day at police headquarters in my bed, polyester suit, uh, sweating, being sworn in as a New York City transit police officer. And so I took that, what became a police officer, and the transit police patrolled the subways. See, back then, we had three police departments in New York City. We had the, the NYPD, the transit police, which was specialized in patrolling the subways, 
and the housing police, which patrol the housing projects. So eventually, um, the, the three departments have merged into one. Uh, every mayor before Mayor Giuliani wanted to do that, and he was the one that did it. So I spent a total of 20 years in uh, technically two police departments, uh, having you know this dream on the back burner through that. So you spent 20 so I, years as an uh, well, 20 years being a police officer in New York. It was at New York City because you were in Long Island, and then you went to New York City to be a police officer. The transit. Yeah, yeah. I commuted. You know, it was only like a half hour. Commute. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it wasn't bad. And then, of course, then 9-11 happened, and, you know, I went through that whole thing. Uh, it was a pretty dark days, you know, and uh, luckily got out of that with my health and, you know, didn't get hurt or anything. And then two years after that, I wound up retiring. You know, I did 20 years, and I brought the the film stuff from the back burner to the front burner because I wanted to, you know, try to explore that and see if I could do anything with it now that I would have the time being retired. And my, my wife, I have a, uh, a wonderful wife, Marcy, who is very supportive of me. So she said, look, if you're going to do it, let's do it and do it right, you know? And, um, you know, it, it took some time, of course, as you know, it's a tough, tough business to get into. So I always loved to write, and I figured I would parlay the love of creative writing into a film, which would become screenwriting. I studied everything I could about it. You know, uh, I was at the time, you know, the Internet wasn't as big as it was today. So there were stores where you can buy actual produced scripts. So I read everything I could. every produced script of the great movies, which was great to see the actual script. For example, my first one was Goodfellas, which is one of my favorites. And it was it was so cool to read the actual shooting script and to learn from it. And which I did. And, and to this day, still, you know, so I, I remember some of those techniques that Martin Scorsese and Nicholas Pileggi, who had written the novel, which was called Wise Guy, and then they made it to Goodfellas. The techniques of writing is still with me today on that. I remember that. And so I took classes, seminars. You know, uh, there was one at Hunter College that I took, which is a great course. And, um, and you know, it, it just started evolving from there. You know, it, it, it's tough. you, you got to learn. Of course, as you know, with, with screenwriting, there's a certain... Uh, way that you have to write a script and, and uh, an agent or a producer won't even look at it if you're not in that industry format. So you got to get that down. Then you got to get, you know, story structure down. You got to get character developed. Down. You know about this, you know, and it's it's just tough to learn. So and I took a few hits, you know, if, if I had every rejection, if I had every rejection on paper, I'd, probably, I'd have a stack of them, you know, the way that is. I, you know, and it made you feel bad, but it just made me stronger. You know, I used it. I, I said, this is going to, going to make me come back even stronger and you know it, it took quite a while to get any any kind of a break and, it, and, you know, I, and again I, you, know, you know about this stuff yeah so it's especially tough, especially know. being an outsider trying to come in because like when um you know a lot of agents and managers and producers they want to see people with credits because they have a track record but it's easier if you're born into the business but if you're an outsider man oh man oh man they make you they make you walk up the ladder and that ladder is like a thousand stories high and they make you walk up there with a uh, heavy bricks on your back. <laughs> right. And like you said, an agent, an agent doesn't want to deal with you unless you already have a deal, but I thought the agent's supposed to get me the deal. So like, it's like, what's going on here? You know, how do I, how do I break through? And then I realized that, you know, to get an agent, you have to have some, an industry um, recommendation, somebody, so, how do I get there without the agent? You know what I mean? You know, you need that to get an agent, but how do I get there without the agent in the first place? So I just think, you know, it's mostly persistence. You know, if you really, you can't dabble in this sort of thing. You have to really love it. It has to be in your blood. It has to be what you want. It has to be something you do every day. That's the way it was with me. I'm doing something with writing and film stuff every single day. You, know, you can't just dabble in this sort of thing. Yeah. And then so I want to say thank you for your service as a, um, a police officer in New York, especially in the transit, because like you hear today, like there's stabbings in there. There's like punching and hitting and murder. So like that must have been a really rough job. So oh, you... the subways, I'll tell you, it's, it's a world unto itself. You know, it's the biggest, most intricate in the world, in New York City subway system. So as you know, it's, you're, you're down there, it's just like another world. You're in another mm. world. And with this transit police, it was a specialized department and that's what we dealt with the transit system crimes and all kinds of things in the transit system and again as you probably could imagine it was just a crazy world you have millions of people literally 
passing through that system. And, you know, four of the five boroughs are connected up with that. So it's, it's, it's crazy. Well, thank you, you know, for but, your service because you probably saved so many people and protected so many, you know, men, women, children, people of all, you know, everyone that's on the yeah. train. I, I, I did, you know, the best I could. I was there, you know, and sometimes just your presence there, you know, people want to see that. You know, it makes them feel better when they see the blue uniform there. And, you know, when um try to help everybody I could, you know, I uh, just did the best just doing the best you can and protecting yourself as well in the process because it can get a little dangerous sometimes. Oh my with, God. With, with that, we were all alone. You know, the patrols were alone. One man patrols. You were, you were um, patrolling a train. Picture this, eight at night to four in the morning. And and those are the high crime hours. So you figure a Saturday night in the summer from Times Square down to Flatbush Avenue, book, and you're bound, something's bound to happen. You know what I mean? But again, you, you do your best. You know, you use your head. And which I, you know, I tried to use a little bit of brain that I, that I had <laughs> and, uh, you know, you get by, you know what I mean? So, and I'm luckily, you know, I never had to hurt anybody or anything like that. And I never got hurt. Oh, and that's what you must have that beautiful know. guardian angel. Yes. It's I, I, Archangel oh. Michael, right? Or Christopher, St. Christopher, right? Yeah. But one of them, I hope is, is you know, I hope they, they, they're still up there watching all of it because you know, these days we could use all the help we could get out yes. there, right? Yes. The crazy I, which leads me to a question. I want to ask you, did you ever write like um, a, a movie or a TV show concept based on your experience of um, being that uh, transit cop? Did you ever write one of those or did you just do what's uh, what do you normally write? Yes. Well, I do have actually I have one um, one thriller and I was, was going to try to turn it into a series, but it could also stand as a, as a feature film. So and I had originally developed it as a pilot. And it's about, you know, a, 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 um, a psychotic, you know, killer in the subway that's pushing, you know, women to their deaths. And then the detectives that are conflicted for other reasons and get involved in the investigation. So, so it's, it's pretty good. And that's one of my projects, actually. Oh, so I'm hopefully that you get a call from an agent or a manager or producer after they hear this. And like, you know, Marilyn, uh, that Ben Fiore is fantastic. We want to talk to him about that, like, uh, you know, that serial killer on the subway, especially since he's a retired cop, he'd be valuable to the team. So hopefully that happens. I would love that for you. I would, be great. I would definitely answer that call. You never <laughs> know. You never know. Um, fiction is stranger. Wait, truth is stranger than fiction, right? And then, um, yes. so I want to ask you, so you're, um, you, you, um, you retired and can you, uh, we, and, um, can you kind of share like of your first break, kind of like how you, how do you, how do you really start? Um, once you started learning how to write scripts and you studied good fellas, did, can you tell us a little bit about your first break so that everyone can, um, well, share with everyone? Yeah, what happened is I, I started working with a couple of local independent filmmakers. I, I, I like to write short scripts, like short thrillers, kind of in the, in, the, in the um the realm of Twilight Zone, kind of that kind of stuff. I love the twist endings and stuff. So I did that for a while. Then I, I went, in, you know, on the contest circuit, the film festival circuit, I, and I did pretty well with, you know, with the awards, with the scripts. And then in 2019, um, I was able to to hook up with a company, an upstart company in Los Angeles called Milestone Studios. Really nice people, and they, and they optioned a couple of projects for me. And one of them was um, they brought me on board to an action thriller film called Pursuit. And right now, matter of fact, right now it's still it's running on uh, Amazon Prime and Apple TV, and starring John Cusack and Emil Hirsch. So I got a couple of A listers in there. And um, I wrote the original draft, and they know one thing led to another. This was changed, that was changed, but I wound up staying on as a co-writer. So that you know, that was a nice um, first break for me. It opened the door for me. So I want everyone to know, like, okay, so you have an amazing action thriller starring John Cusack. I mean, come on! I mean, come what? on! From retired cop to getting like John Cusack to be in your action thriller, and if you guys want to check it out, um, it's called Pursuit, and it's currently on Amazon and Apple TV. So do check that out. That is my friend, my buddy Ben Fiore. Because you guys all know I'm born in Italy, and people were like, Ben didn't know I was Italian, but my mom is full on Italian, and so, but you had to study. And you studied like an A plus student and you learned to write screenplays 
and then you started um, writing these Twilight Zone um, scripts. And then finally, you met um, Milestone Pictures as a new company in Los Angeles, and they optioned your script. So, so your dream is coming true. This is so fantastic. I mean, oh yeah, it's, um, slow but you know, slowly but surely, still a ways to go. I also have um, another. I wrote. I'm a big boxing fan as well. So I wrote a boxing theme um, feature that sort of got like a Rocky feel to it. It's a feel good movie. And um, at the beginning of this year, I optioned that with a company called Keller Entertainment Group in Los Angeles. And right now, you know, it's under option, and they're you know they're uh, they're looking to get into financing and trying to attach you know a director and some talent to it. So I got that going on. I'm very excited about that one as well. Oh. So you know. We'll see what happens. You know, still a ways to go, but the little little things are happening. You know what I mean? Because I persisted. I hung in there. You know, I never gave up. And believe me, there were times I wanted to quit. And like I said, my wife said, no, you get right back in there and you start writing and you get that stuff out there. You do it. If she, if she wasn't pushing me, I, I think I might have quit on that. Oh, we love your wife. Yeah, because I heard that, like, um, sometimes it takes two people. That It's so important to either have a mentor or a cheerleader or have like a spouse or family friend that really says, keep going, keep going. Oh yeah, no, because she's been like my rock because there, there are times, I tell you, I, I, again, as you know, the way this business is, you know, it's so discouraging and it takes so much out of you and you just feel like saying, you know what, I'm barking up the wrong tree over here. Maybe this isn't for me. But yeah. she'll say, no, no, you know, you got the hell and get up and get get back there and get in the, get in the game. And she, uh, my wife, Marcy, is a former um, nursery school teacher's aide. And what happened was their, their school, she was there for over 15 years, but because of COVID, you know, eventually, eventually shut down. So she actually um, self-published three children's books that are available on Amazon Kindle right now. Uh, okay, yeah, let's give a shout out to her. What's one of her um, children's books? Well, uh, um, she did she did one for um, a child, two children's counting books. One was for Halloween and one was for, Christ, for Christmas time. And then she just did one. Um, we have a pet uh, bird. It's a cockatiel, which is really funny. We get such a kick out of him. He's, he's, he's a great family pet. And she did, um, her recent one was called A Day in the Life of a Cockatiel. And it's a whole picture book about about our bird, how funny it is and his antics and his and how he, he loves us and how we love him. And so she did these three books and they're available. And, you know, the whole, well, the whole family were really into the art, so. My oldest son, Stephen, is a, um, an interactive designer with Marvel Entertainment. He's been with Marvel for uh, almost four years now. And so he's, he's, you know, he, he's into all that graphic stuff. And then my youngest son, Christopher, is a trained actor with uh, Lee Strasberg Film and Theater Institute in New York City, which he's, he's training again with them right now, very intense training. So the whole family, like, roll it to the, uh, into the arts over here. So we support each other in all our endeavors, you know, which makes it even better. Like we have each other to go to and to, and to encourage, you know, and, and most of the time it's me that they're encouraging because I'm always doubt about it. Oh, this isn't going to happen. That's going to, no, 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 no. You stay in there. You got the talent, you do this and that. So, so we, we, we got it. We got a pretty good um, thing going here as far as the, you know, our own support group for each other. So yeah. it's great. It's a lot. And, you know, it's all interesting who's working on this project, who's got that going on. So we keep each other going but with that. Yeah. So I want to just let everyone know. So, like, you're, you, um, you, you're, what's your favorite thing to write? Like, are you, uh, is it, do you have a, a type, like, do you normally write uh, actions and thrillers? Is that your favorite? Thriller. Yeah. I, I, I like thrillers and, uh, and, and horror, not, not the gory type of horror, but the, the kind of psychological stuff. Well, that's you know, the that best makes- kind. Yes, that to me it is because you know you you see a lot of movies like that and then there's a ton of blood and guts and gore, and, and I'll be honest with you, to me you know like it, it doesn't take a lot to throw a little blood and guts all over the screen, but it takes a lot to to do something um, in a psychological type of sense where you're making people think and and you got a twist or two thrown in there, and and that's what I like to kind of do. So I'm kind of the thriller and and horror genres. Oh. You know, like I said, I was a big fan of like Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt. I love all that stuff. And I love taking an audience in a certain direction, and then I turn them on their heads in the end. And they're like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. 
you know, when somebody tells me that, so I didn't see that coming, then that's great. You know, that, that, that itself is a great compliment to me. Yeah. So I had you. Yeah. And, um, so I just want everyone to know that you were the winner of the best thriller screenplay in 2021 for Marina Del Rey Film Festival. And it was, yes. it was an anth anthology feature, um, comprised of four award-winning shorts. And, um, and oh. then you had the fifth grade, which is a collecting of haunted tales and, uh, haunting tales. So we, oh my gosh, you got so many good things that like Hollywood would that love for one, you. I took four of my award-winning short strips that had won awards over the last couple of years. And what I did was I connected them. I strung them together, but with a backstory, that kind of like a terrifying backstory. And I put that together like that. So that would be able to stand again. It's another one that would stand alone as a, a compelling feature, like Twilight Zone movie. Or it could also be used as a pilot for maybe an anthology series, which I would love to be a part of something like that. Like I feel that we need that again, like a Twilight Zone or a Tales from the Crypt. People love that stuff, with you know, with with different tales being told. You know, one every week you get a new tale, and and it's introduced by you know. By, by somebody and you know it, I, I just love that i just don't you know just think that's so cool with the people really enjoy that you know what kind of do for that yeah so that's the fifth grade and it was a collection of haunting tales like how many were in there well there were like i said there were four of my four. uh wood scripts and then the the uh they, they're strung together by um by a backstory so it's it's a woman that you know that has something going on and she's kind of troubled and she's securing a burial plot for her we love you know grandmother is like the matriarch of the family and she's securing the burial plot when she on on her way to the cemetery she's on she, she just it's like a near uh fatal accident she survives and she gets there all shaken up but the caretaker takes her around and as they're going towards this hill where the grandmother wants to be buried they pass on four different occasions they pass the freshly filled grave and as they stop, the caretaker tell the caretaker tells her about each of those grave like the story behind it is until she finally gets up there and and we have our twist you know a twist ending the cars which oh. she never really did make it out of that accident it's her own funeral is taking place up there so it's kind of you know and then so you have actually these four tales strung together by the terrifying backstory it's, oh. it's like a, like a tales from the crypt uh, movie or twilight zone the movie and like i said again it can also be used as maybe possibly you know a pilot for for an anthology series at some point which i would absolutely be thrilled to be a part of if that could that ever happens okay so that's from your award-winning um uh that was from the is that the the fifth grade that was the um award winner from the marina del rey film festival in 2021 yeah, right uh, uh, um a feature screenplay from the marina del rey film festival last year okay which was Nice was a nice honor, you know, to, to have that. I was very surprised at that and very pleased with it, of course. Yeah. So um, so we're going to invite our audience to come on back for part two with Ben Fiore because we have lots to talk about because a lot of listeners want to be a writer. They want to be a director or a producer. And we want to just, uh, you know, um, like really get into someone that goes from police officer, retired, didn't give on their childhood dream. And this is, you know, can we just say older? Because I'm on the older path, too, as a female that like, you know, just you know, getting like my writing with awards. And, and um, as you guys know, I have Enchanting Book Readings, which is my children's podcast that's ranked top 1%. And so that's giving me steam forward to to make great connections. But I'm on the this older journey. So there's a lot of us that didn't make it when we're young, but we're like more like um, champagne. Like we're now valuable champagne. We're like ready where you can cork us. So I, I'm coming back to part two with Ben Fiore because a lot of you um, are probably like interested to see how you can make it if you're if you're maybe older. We're allowed to say older, but you know, so don't don't ever give up in your dreams. This is a very special podcast. And coming back to part two with Ben Fiore, we have lots more to talk about. Okay, Ben, you're gonna come back. I will be there. Okay, so everyone coming back. Thank you for listening. Have a beautiful day. Come back to part two with Ben Fiore.